Wait, what just happened? Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from K Hux Nation, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the newest Halloween units in Dragalia Lost. Now, first thing I want to mention, I want to apologize to everybody out there for the fact that this video is really late. I've tried countless number of times to try and make this video, but every single time, I've come across te technological issues, which have either made the video completely useless. Um, and I had to re-record it again, um, or some random other technological issue in terms of my editing software or whatever that make it impossible to use the video. So hopefully this time it works. <laughs> and again, I apologize for how late this is. I tried doing it immediately when it came out, uh, but yeah, I, I ran into problems. So at the very least, these are gonna be my thoughts on the newest units, okay? Some of them are pretty good. Uh, some of them are okay. So without further ado, let's go over them. So first up, we have the Farstar uh, Halloween MIM unit. It's a fire unit, axe unit, okay, which is kind of surprising to me, just probably because of the fact I'm so used to uh, Gala MIM being a spear unit, but she's an axe unit. And let's go ahead and read into her abilities. Her first activated ability is Charming Trick. It deals flame damage to enemies directly ahead, creates a debuff stone that lasts for 10 seconds and reduces the enemy's defense inside it by 15 percent that's already pretty good uh the fact that the fact that the debuff zone compared to just a strict application upon hit uh, is slightly worse but depending on how big the debuff zone is it's not that big of a deal now uh and we can i think we can even see what the, their abilities look like okay yeah so it's a, it's a pretty decently sized aoe field Oh, excuse me. Of course, for any type of mobile bosses that are, uh, or uh, raid bosses that are kind of mobile, it might not be nearly as useful, um, but it's a pretty decently sized field. Second activated ability, Tempering Fancy. This is with, where Tempering Fancy is where gonna, uh, you're going to find a good portion of your utility coming from. Uh, it increases the strength of flame attuned adventures in the team by 20% for 15 seconds and activates Dream Boost. For 15 seconds during dream boost the user's critical rate is increased by five percent okay now obviously for the first portion of her ability uh, she's going to be most useful in uh mono flame my mono fire uh teams just because the fact that the entire team can actually take use of the 20 percent uh strength buff um which is already okay in its own right just because of the fact that uh there against the higher level difficulties uh quests you're, you're typically you're typically going to want to be using mono attribute teams anyways in the first place um so that's not really much of a restriction in itself the only time it's really a restriction is if you can get away with running some sort of multi-attribute uh type of team in which case then of course you might not be getting the full benefit that you might want to get out of it um although luckily that's not too big of a deal just because of the fact that uh the main portion of this ability that's the most relevant the most useful is actually going to be the dream boost portion of her ability just because of the fact that her dream boost actually applies to her uh passive ability on its own so going down the list the co abilities plus 30 percent critical damage that's pretty decent uh her passive ability is uh Flame Worn Sweet Natured 2 reduces susceptibility to burning by 100%. When shapeshifting, men will transform into Bruhilda, regardless of what dragon she is equipped with, and her attack rate while shapeshifted will increase by 15%. Okay. Now, basically, just from reading this, she works almost exactly the same way as Gala. Him. Okay. And she also has the stun 100% resistance, too. So, straight up, She's already just as good as Gala Mem, um, if not better, because of her third passive ability, which I will go in just a second. So if you happen to not have Gala Mem as of right now, you can pretty much get Halloween Mem, and you essentially have almost the same exact type of unit, if not slightly better. All right. Now, the fact that her... Uh, now, I believe Gala Mem... Actually, we could take a look at it right now. So for Halloween Mem, 
her second transformation and onwards will have an increase of 15% attack rate, which is already really good because that means more damage overall in general. Okay, now if I were to take a look at Galamim, let's see what hers, uh, I believe it's just more strength when she transforms the second time and onwards. Take a look at it real quick. Flame Words Nature 2. Uh, yeah, it's her strength will increase. Oh no, her, her attack rate is uh, increased as well. Okay, yeah, it's basically almost the same exact thing. Go back here. But yeah, um, so it's basically almost the exact same thing already. And her third passive ability is arguably what makes her slightly better than Galamim, uh, which is the fact that it's called Dra Dragonic Dream 2. Increases defense while shapeshifted by 100%. When the dream boost effect is activated, remember that's from the uh, second activated ability, the Tempering Fancy, which is what I noted before as being the most relevant out of her kit. Uh, when dream boost is active, adds 20% to the modifier applied to damage when in dragon form. So out of the two Mim units that we currently have in the game, Gala Mim and Halloween Mim, their kind of main gimmick in the game is the fact that they want to be it in dragon form as much as possible. Okay. Uh, so because of that, being able to have th that, that third passive ability is going to really what makes her uh, slightly better than Galamin. Uh, because of the fact that when in dragon form, if you recall, whenever you take damage in dragon form, you remember that little gauge meter that's normally in the bottom left corner of your screen where your health is? Whenever you take damage in dragon form, um, instead of that dragon, instead of that damage being taken from your health, your adventurous health, instead it simply reduces the, uh, the time spent in dragon form uh, shorter. Okay, so if you like had this much uh, dragon uh, time left in dragon form, and it's like slowly going downwards, if you get hit and take damage, it'll just like quickly go down further in chunks until it reaches zero. Okay. That's how damage works while in dragon form. So the fact that you get a 100% increase in defense while, sh while in dragon form is already huge because that means you're gonna be taking half as much damage compared to normal, which means it makes it much easier to stay in dragon form, which is where you're gonna be doing a majority of your damage. Uh, and that's where the majority of Mim's kit comes from. Okay, so that's already huge on its own. The fact that you get the 20% uh, damage uh, modifier too while in dragon form when you have dream boost active, that's just icing on the cake, okay? Um, and if anything, you might even argue this is to help make up for the fact that uh, the Halloween Mim doesn't have the uh, 15%, 20 or 15% strength buff while in dragon form like Galamim does, okay? So all in all, okay, Halloween Mim is arguably slightly better than Gala Mim because of the fact that A, she has some actual uh, buffs and debuffs in her normal kit uh, that can be applied while, to, while in dragon form, okay? On top of the fact that her dragon form is slightly better, um, mostly because of the fact of the 100, the times two defense uh, part of her dragonic ring too, okay? So all in all, pretty good unit keep in mind she is an axe unit so she will have slightly shorter reach compared to a, a spear unit like galamim is but all in all very good unit very good next up we have halloween illusane five star light unit spear unit okay look at her details oh excuse me. first active ability sacred maiden deals light damage to enemies directly ahead oh screen and activate skill shift if the attack next. Phase two increases the entire team's strength, while phase three adds health restoration. Skill shift ends when you connect again during phase three. Second activated ability, mischief maker, deals light damage to enemies directly ahead, and fills the user's skill gauges if the attack connects. Okay, the second ability is, is pretty decent, okay? Um, it's nothing really too fancy. It's basically just a basic damage attack uh with the added bonus of having a like a uh 
a slight uh, skill haste or a slight skill prep type move applied. To it. Okay, like it gives like a, a, a small burst in restoration to uh, your skill gauges. Okay, which isn't that big of a deal. But I mean, I guess it's something worth noting. It, it can stack with skill haste on its own. So I don't really think it's that relevant, though. Um, let's see. The, uh, the Sacred Maiden on its own, too, isn't really that special. It, like, for phase one of the uh, skill shift, it only does raw damage, and that's it. Phase two increases the entire team's strength. I don't know by how much. I'm surprised they don't actually list it. Uh, but it increases the entire team's strength. And phase three does stores health. So, it's not too bad, but honestly, her abilities come across more like what a four star you get some uh, abilities would feel like. So, kind of already a little bit underwhelming. Um, for the co ability, plus 15% HP. Eh, okay. Decent, I guess. Normal. Passive abilities, plus 30% skill damage. That's pretty decent. 100% crit resistance, that's standard. As well as the fact the uh, plus 35 gauge accelerator. This is probably going to be where the majority of what's her name again halloween elisane where halloween elisane's uh viability comes from is simply from that third passive ability just because of the fact that it makes it uh way easier against any sort of raid boss um where like if they're in their rage mode it makes them run out of rage mode a lot faster okay so it this will probably be the only reason why you would actually want to use Halloween Elisane is because of the third pass abilities during those like hard boss fights. But that's kind of it. Um, and to be honest, arguably compared to other light units in the game, you might just want to prefer using some other light units that, act can, that can actually provide more value to your team consistently rather than only during specific moments of fight. Uh, like. At least that's how it come across to me. So overall, I don't really feel like Elisane is that great of a unit. Kind of comes across more of like a four star unit, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, I, I don't really have much stuff left. Much else left to say. There we go. Next up, we have the dragon Halloween Meridimus, five star water dragon. Straight off the bat, already really good. Okay, and we'll get into this real quick. First skill, Hocus Pocus, restores HP to all allies. Increase a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds and increases the skill damage of adventurers inside it by 30%. This is absolutely nuts, okay? Um, now, from what I can recall off the top of my head, I don't think there's any other dragon in the game that actually creates a buff zone, okay? For other uh, adventurers let, to take advantage of, okay? Now, the fact that she he already... Re uh, restores HP on its own to all allies. It's not even like just just straight up. They don't have to even have to be nearby. That alone is already really good. Very good. Okay. I don't even think there's really any other water dragons that currently do that off the top of my head. Uh, so this might be the first water dragon that can actually restore HP. So that alone is already good. But the fact that it also provides a buff zone is absolutely fantastic. Um, most notably going to be during any of the... Uh, if you're ever playing co-op with other people just because the fact that they they can actually take advantage of, of that buff zone way way better compared to any of the npcs from your uh your actual team units okay because the npcs are just kind of kind of do their own thing they're not going to like try and stay within the buff zone nearly as much compared to in co-op other people are going to try and use, abuse that buff zone as much as possible so to increase skill damage of venture inside it by 30 percent that's already pretty good uh, from just a dragon ability. That's basically like a free buff just, just for going in dragon form. Um, her, his passive abilities are also really good as well. Uh, the plus 30% HP, that's decent, okay. Although what really, really nails uh, or puts the nail in the coffin for this dragon is the plus 35% skill haste when you're tuned to water absolutely ridiculous if i recall correctly this is currently the highest skill haste ability in the game i think the most you can get from skill haste uh from like warm prints is like 15 percent i think 
Okay. So going from like 15% to 35%, that is a ridiculously huge jump. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure there's some other dragons out there that also provide skill haste. Um, there's not very many though. I think there's only like two or three other dragons that might have that. Um, but that's a really huge amount. So definitely Halloween Meridimus is going to be one of the best dragons currently in the game. Um, if, especially if you can combine it with particular, particular units that want to use their abilities as much as possible. Uh, one perfect example is going to be this chick right here to Laria because the fact if you remember during my uh my explanation video when she first when she first came out uh, her pep talk ability during phase three of her pep talk she provides a 20 percent increase to team your entire team's attack rate for 10 seconds and just like i explained in, in that video uh, increasing your Increasing the speed in which you attack is absolutely critical. It's a little bit broken, to be honest, just because of the fact it means, A, you get more hits in per, per second, uh, meaning more damage. More damage means you're refilling your skill gauges faster, okay? Um, which, again, lets you be able to either, A, do more damage or do more utility more often, okay? So if you have a 35% skill haste, on a unit like Celeria, that means she's able to get her pep talk way more often, which means she can also provide that uh, team attack speed boost rate up more often as well. Um, and that is not counting any possible skill haste you happen to have equipped via Worm Prince too. So if, let's say, theoretically, if you had the max 15% skill haste on Celeria via Worm Prince, on top of Halloween Marinimus on Celeria. That's a total of a 50% skill haste increase <laughs> on Celeria. So she'll just be dishing out her cooldowns like every other hit. That's insane. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, and that's where Halloween Marinimus is really going to shine or on units like Celeria where you can really abuse that mechanic on units that would just are, are, are more ability based than they are stat based okay so definitely one of the best dragons in the game at the moment uh going down the list we have halloween lowen halloween lowen is arguably uh the best healer in the game as of right now i previously made another video going over which i believed were the were currently the best healers in the game now i know technically healers aren't exactly meta in the game but for a lot of us mortals <laughs> who don't really focus on the meta okay most of us are going to be having at least one healer unit on our team okay that's just how we are um considering the fact that the game does have like rpg ish type of like mechanics like classes and stuff like that it just makes sense that most people are going to have a healer in their team so Previously in my what is the best healer video, uh, I had explained that where is she, Aileen, Aileen was currently the best healer in the game, um, primarily because of the fact that she's like one of the only healers uh, that actually has two, uh, actually has double healing activated abilities. Okay, um, and not only are they doing healing, but they have a bunch of other useful utility included as well um medicinal cure being the fact that not only does it do an instant heal a burst heal but it also has healing over time on top of the fact it actually provides a support utility as well um buffs it, it just provides a bunch of buffs okay which is already kind of busted for a four star healing ability on top of the fact that her other one uh has, does burst heal to herself nearby allies and remove stun if anybody happens to have so also just really good okay now in terms of Lowen, Lowen is arguably just as good as Aileen if not slightly better uh and I'll let me find him real quick where is he there he is okay Lowen's first active ability you won't trick me restores HP to all allies continues healing over the next 15 seconds and increases the entire team's defense by 10% for five seconds okay now this is going to be slightly better than Aileen's because of the fact that Aileen's uh first 
healing activated uh, ability. Although it also provides a defense, it, it has the skill shift included as well. So you have to like use it a few times first before you start getting the support buff. Whereas for a low end, uh, you get the defense buff immediately every single time you use it okay so that alone already arguably makes a low end slightly better than a lean um especially when you start looking at any strength and or not strength when you start looking at any double buff effects that you currently have equipped on any of your units as well that means that low end is able is simply able to trigger double buff effects more consistently compared to a lane while also having the same amount of healing as a lane too okay so very useful second active second activated ability here's a treat for you restores hp to all allies increases the entire team's max hp by 10 percent for the remainder of the quest once the hp buff reaches the limit hp recovery effect is granted instead so this is already a much better healing ability compared to ailing's second activated ability because ailing's second active ability is just a raw burst heal Whereas uh, with no, with really no extra additive effect, on top of the fact that Alien's second ability um, only does it to herself and nearby allies, whereas Lowen's second ability does it to all allies. Period. They don't have to be nearby; they're just period on top, and it still has the burst heal just like Alien's does. Okay. Um, although Lowen's second ability also has some extra. Uh, icing on the cake too where it increases HP so basically it helps it continues helping the rest of your team become a little bit more tankier because now they have more HP that they can be healed up to it raises their max cap uh, that they can of damage that they can take before they die um, including not including the fact that if that cap happens to be reached it then turns into uh, more healing, an extra healing effect instead, uh, which is incre which all it does is increase Lowen's healing output overall. So straight off the bat, Lowen is already the best healing unit in the game. Already beats Aileen. Aileen's already really good on her own, but Lowen just absolutely takes the cake. <laughs> Co-ability, uh, recovery potency plus 20%. I think that's the same as Aileen's. Uh, passive ability, skill prep, 75%. That's decent. I, ne I was never really much of a fan of skill prep, although it is necessary in some types of difficult quests. Sleep point resistant, 100%. Standard. And force charge 3 fills 25% of skill, skill gauges when the user's force strikes connect up to 3 times per quest. I'm not a big fan of this ability, but sure, why not? All right. Next up, we have Halloween Odetta. First ability. Envoy of the End deals water damage to enemies in a line and reduces their defense by 5%. That's okay. It's a 4-star unit, so it's, about, it's pretty much about as much as I expected. Second ability, Wonderful World, increases the user and nearby ally strength by 20% for 15 seconds. Again, it's fairly bleh, standard. About as what I expected. Dragon Haste, 15%. Standard. Prime Defense, plus 10%. That's probably going to be the most notable thing about this unit. Uh, stun resistance 100%, buff time plus 20%. Everything about this unit is pretty much kind of what I expect at the fourth part. Um, nothing really too fancy or notable worth, worth mentioning. Next unit, Halloween Althemia. First ability, Sweet Treat, restores HP to all allies. Already a terrible healing ability compared to all the other healers that I already mentioned. Notably, my best healers in Dragalia Lost video. Uh, second ability, Better Trick. Oh, just a slight explanation about the first for the healing ability, by the way. Um, like I mentioned before in my previous video, the healing video, you pretty you want to try to use healers who have at least a healing ability that restores that has burst heal, restores HP to all allies, on top of have the heals over time over like 15 seconds type of uh, uh, ability attached to it as well. You want to use those type of healers just because they increase the healing output more consistently overall um whereas straight just plain old burst heal like this isn't nearly as useful so all like already not very good bitter trick deals light damage to surrounding enemies and restores the use hp to five by five percent of damage inflicted not very good five percent is not that big 
to be honest. Like, it, it's almost nothing. Um, so I'm not really expecting too much by that. It's pretty much an, like a little bit of an over-glorified damage ability. Uh, passive ability skill prep 75%. Eh. Curse resistance 100%. Standard. Full HP equals strength plus 10%. I'm not a big fan of full HP uh, abilities. Next up, we have the Dragon Halloween Silke. First ability, Pumpkin Prank. Deals light damage to surrounding enemies and reduces strength by 15%. That's actually pretty good for a 4-star dragon. That's, that's actually pretty good. Um, passive, HP and strength plus 20%. That's kind of standard. And next up we have Halloween Edward. Uh, I don't think I really need to talk about Halloween Edward. He's a three-star unit. He's not that great. We'll just say it. We'll just leave it at that. But <laughs> that was it for today, guys. That was kind of a lengthy video. A lot of talking on my end. Uh, go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about the newest units in the comment section down below. Uh, my personal favorite is honestly... Halloween Meridimus just because of all the jankiness they could potentially do with it if you combine it with the right units. On top of course the, the Halloween then is obviously going to be the best unit out of this whole batch. But without further ado, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KHOX Nation. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.